mic check. Can you guys hear me okay? If so, give me a thumbs up in chat. We're getting ready to get things started here today. Today we're uh, opening up for uh, Q&A. Uh, we can talk about anything. We can go a little bit off subject if you like, but the main focus for today's discussion is the PP166 Power Bank from Bigsby. Here to answer any of your questions. And we're just going to open it up to you guys today. Um, I've done a few podcasts on this already, so there's a little bit of information that I've already discussed, but I just figured, you know what, let's let's do this live and ask or answer any questions that you guys have. We'll get started here shortly. Okay, let's see here. Audio input. First and foremost, how's everybody doing today? Hope you guys are having a wonderful week. Um, audio is good. Great, great. What about now after the transition? Sometimes we get a little bit of uh, an echo on our connection. So let me know what you guys are hearing, if it's clear, if everything is bueno. And if so, We'll slowly dive into this, man. We have uh, an exciting one today. I don't normally go live all the time. We used to back in the day. We used to have a little um, podcast that we did. But, uh, man, podcasts are super time-consuming, at least to integrate them on YouTube. So we uh, wanted to look into doing one that was pre-recorded. But I love going live with you guys. We have all the equipment for it, all the fancy stuff here. We've got the uh, all the Sony Alphas, which is what you guys are on. That's not your traditional webcam there. So uh, it's clear as day, 720p, live at least. And we've got the wonderful condenser mics, the nice backdrops. We'll make it fun for you guys. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us today. I know all you guys are busy. I know the world is crazy now. Uh, I know that um, there's just a lot going on, man. Uh, it's affecting all of us. So it's good to just come out here and talk a little bit of fishing with you guys, particularly the uh, Bixby PP166. Uh, just full disclosure, I, I, I am on their fishing team. So, you know, obviously I, I use their products a lot. And uh, my main thing with Bixby, um, you know, this year's my first year with them is to give them good input, man. You know, give them true input uh, where I can help uh, improvements kind of see and, and just have my two cents into it. Um Recently, Bixby made a huge announcement about uh, them uh, releasing a product that was sort of in a different direction, right? So we think of Bixby as obviously the uh, the Bixby Jet, the Jet Propulsion, the handheld device, um, and fantastic man, um, having a blast with it. We uh, obviously still using that thing almost every other day or so now. The change, their announcement was that uh, they they're getting into power solutions, uh, battery banks, and so if you guys have been watching at least the last eight, nine, ten episodes, I'd already been using this thing, right? And a little louder, a little louder. Audio is oh, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry. A little louder. Let's see what I can do for you guys. All right, one sec. A little louder. Let me turn on my gain here. All right, what about now? Is that better? Give me a thumbs up if so. So, Bixby is in the power industry now, right? Or they've been, but you know now they're actually producing it, and uh, they're producing power, so... I've been using this thing for some time now and obviously signing uh, 
non-disclosure agreements and stuff. So I really could not, you know, talk too much about it until recently. And okay, sweet. I appreciate that, Joe. Uh, shout out to who's on tonight, man. Shout outs real quick. Joe, Nick, Jace. What's going on, guys? How y'all doing, man? Redfish throat. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it was fun, man. I hope you, hopefully you got, you know, make it into your own. You don't have to follow my spices or, or seasons or anything. I'm pretty sure there's some better stuff out there. Um, I will give you, before I get into this, just a little heads up on this previous episode. If you put that idea, but you throw it on a pit, 10 times better. Fish just like, if you put it on a barbecue pit, anything with mesquite or anything smoked, fish has a unique ability to just bring in all those flavors that you cook with from the pit. And it just comes out 10 times better. But anyway, that's a, another topic. Um, so, man, I, I'm super stoked, dude. Like, I, I'm, I'm naturally, I'm um, a little bit of background on me. So, I've always been heavy into the just tech, right? I, I used to run a uh, an IT company. And I used to go to the CESs in Las Vegas every year and get to see all of this latest and greatest, uh, you know, technology that's just not out yet, right? So um, whenever I run into technology and it clashes with kayak fishing, man, I'm just all giddy about it. And it's cool to kind of see it play in. Um, so, and, and um, you know, I, I whenever I, I speak out and do Q&As on stuff like this, it's usually for a, a dang good reason, dude. And they, Bixby really hit, the nail on the hammer, right? Is that it? Hammer on nail, whatever. Um, why? Because this is technology we haven't seen before in, in the kayak industry. So I'm going to show you real quick. This is uh, this is it right here. This is the newest, latest, and greatest. And I'm telling you right now, this is the toughest battery pack that is not just going to control your normal, typical electronics. This is actually enough juice to power anything and everything that you have on your kayak um you'll never see or at least as of right now you're not going to see anything that's like this uh and i'm going to tell you why and how the the tech has kind of merged in now i am going to do a if you guys watch our top gear series with next level fishing tv um we we just recently started that we put some of our older videos into that playlist but really we've only done like three or four top gear episodes and the reason is those are real editing intensive, right? We're, we're having to really break down what we're trying to do and, and speak to it as clearly as possible. And this is our next one that we're actually uh, featuring on, on Top Gear is this. So some of these questions, uh, they're going to be kind of limited. I mean, you can ask whatever and I'll answer them, but some of the things I'll cover will be somewhat kind of limited. If you do want to get into some crazy good uh, detailed discussion about it, I have done a podcast on it. Uh, look up, um, actually, I'll give you guys a link once I'm done. Uh, connecting or once I'm done going live on this and if you come back to this video I'll put up some cards so you can actually get a link towards that kayak bass and beers or beers kayak ba kayak bass and beers that's the name of the podcast man uh, I've been on that podcast already twice now the first um, just kind of soft introduction talking about they just had questions on my highlights and things like that and just some of the things that I've done in the industry, which was real cool to, to kind of talk. I don't really talk too much about that stuff. Uh, it was cool to kind of open up to him on that. And then the second one, we talked about this guy, which is this, because it, it's, like I said, man, it's changing it up. Um, it's waterproof up to over 100 feet. Um, and this is just, man, I don't know, dude. This is This is nuts, dude. Like... Without knowing too much about this, because when I, you got to understand, when I first got this, they didn't give me all the intel on this. So when I'm using this thing, on all these episodes, like I said, the past 10 episodes, I'm hiding this thing. <laughs> you don't really see it on any of the videos until after they announced it, but I'm testing out on everything. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out, man. I didn't know, like, I'm like, well, dude, how is this little thing right here? I'm just going to give you a, a, an example of how strong this is. So... You guys are all kayak anglers, or I'm assuming you are. You've all spent money on batteries, uh, deer feeder batteries at that, right? Because that's sort of our most cost-effective way of producing uh, power on our kayak. You know, those are the small little brick batteries. I've been through maybe 20, 30, 40. Okay, well, this, is, this one device right here, 
which you can palm with one hand, is equivalent to 27 amp hour deer feeder batteries. And like I said, I got a lot of those right now in my uh, garage. Um, and I didn't quite understand that, man. Uh, I didn't quite understand how in the world are they packing all this power that it's the something's not right, right? So they finally released it, and what it is is, uh, you know, it's it's that new age car tech, man. It's that Tesla tech. It's um, they're they're using the same battery technology as as like those Teslas, and so they're not everybody can get a hold of that kind of quality. Uh, I think it's uh, lithium phosphate. I believe is the technical name to, uh, of that. So you're getting 100. The reason it's P, P166, that's actually 166 amp hour. That's what you're getting, man. Um, <laughs> so you don't have to charge this thing. If you run real minimal with just like a fish finder, you, you're not going to have to charge this thing very often. I think I've already gone a week and a half, two weeks without a, uh, a single charge, um, which is crazy impressive. Let me look at some of these comments here, dude. Uh, let's see what you guys want to talk about here. I went last week to Corpus, got skunked. A lot of people are getting skunked right now, dude. Um, been fishing here in Corpus. Been smoking the trout and reds, Jesus. <laughs> Surprising flower buff, bluff is good. What were you using? What? Oh, I guess you guys are having a conversation there. I got you. You didn't get nothing. Th yeah, okay. 27. Wow. Yeah, well, you, while you guys are chatting away and trying to figure out all the secrets to fishing, I'll continue this conversation right here. So, um, and by the way, if y'all have any questions about this, um, feel free to ask in the, in the chat below and I'll, I'll definitely ask it or answer it rather. Um, so, yeah, man, uh, the, the battery industry is, is going to change solely because of that device. I mean, obviously, you're going to get a lot of people, different companies that are going to want to know who, how, what, where, when, how can we make something very similar to that or how can we make it better? So, you know, obviously they're gonna they're the forefronts in, in the industry when it for this caliber of battery, for this small size, pound for pound, definitely the strongest battery on the market. Um not just pound for pound, but also just integrity. The it's tough, dude. This thing has got a crazy shell around it. And there's videos of guys dragging this thing with their trucks and you know there's like these little tethering holes right here right and they're dragging them on trucks trying to break them dragging them through mud rocks whatever then tossing them in water pulling them back out and plugging them back in man and, and they're firing off so i've had a lot of fun with it um if you guys are big on fish finders if you're powering your power poles uh, if you have kayak lights you know like i know a lot of guys here in texas have those us Texas guys, we love our, our lights. We love big rims and kayak lights. <laughs> um, see what else we got going on here. I'm done. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, and what's interesting about this battery is, you know, there's, I'm pretty sure you're going to have revisions down the line, right? Everything improves um I, I don't really know how much improvement we can do on this other than just getting it smaller and lighter but it's already small and light if you ask me um there are some uh, ports i'll talk to you i'll let you guys know a little bit how it works um the main fun it, this is very simple the way it works so you've got four little ports right here in the front one of them is your recharge port and then these three right here that you see, these are all for uh, plugging in accessories. So I brought something here to show you guys something. So what Bixby does or what they have is they have these connectors. They, they, they come with it and they plug in. Now, these are watertight. So I, I just want to remind you guys that this thing is waterproof up to over 100 feet of water, which is super impressive. Um, once you plug this in, you know, it depends on what you're trying to use, right? If you're trying to use your your standard red and black for your uh, fish finders, power poles, lights even, um, you know, this is all comparable. 
you're all you're, you're basically going to be able to utilize this for all that um what's really unique and what i won't talk too much about this i'm going to show you guys because top gear you know we really kind of break down why we consider it top gear right i mean it's not just picking up any product and saying we're featuring this on top gear if we're going to feature something on top gear on, on our top gear playlist it's going to be for a dang good reason so um look look into that or look you'll see that in the near future uh we are basically gonna just light up a kayak not literally i just mean uh, with with just a bunch of tech you know everything that the ultimate kayak angler would probably want on their kayak and show you how this little thing is enough juice to make it happen and um, the warranty is ridiculous now i did a little bit of research on these batteries right I, if you're just tuning in we're talking about the uh, bixby pp 166 power bank um, and how they're using sort of that those tesla style batteries the same type of batteries to to power this thing that's how they're getting it so small uh, that's how they're getting it that much powerful that's also how they're getting it to last long dude uh, this thing has got, it, it's got a shelf life of like 10 years and you don't even get your first power drop. You know, when you use batteries over and over, you kind of like, you know, you have a cell phone, right? And then after about two years, you're like, man, this thing just doesn't hold the charge like it used to. Uh, it happens to everything. Well, this thing right here, these uh, style of batteries that they're using, man, it's, I don't think you get, you, you don't, you won't see your first power drop off to after like six years or something like that and even at that it's not very much you know considering how much you're already getting out of it like i would be happy if this thing was half the power i mean i'd still be able to that's still equivalent to 10 traditional deer feeder batteries you know what i mean um so i'm just I, i'm kind of excited to see how this uh goes in the long run man it's gonna be real cool hey jimmy and jimmy's in the house <laughs> In a meeting, yeah. Uh, and you, uh, let's see here. Will the battery power my Minn Kota power? No, um, I mean, I'm sure it, it probably could, but it, not that. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend it for that. It doesn't have that kind of, um, I don't know if it has the output it needs for that. I'd be interested to find out. Because, um, see, the difference between what you're putting in that Minn Kota, you're, you're putting in a huge battery in that Minn Kota. Um, I'd be interested to see the specs of what is in that Minn Kota, what kind of battery. I, I want to say it's like a car battery that thing uses, man. It's pretty, pretty big battery. Um, not only that, but I, I haven't been on one of those new ones, if that's what you're referring to. I don't know if you're, you're talking about like a tr powering a tro trolling motor versus a let me see what you're saying. Old Town Predator. And Coda Pot. Yeah, Old Town. Yeah, I think, um, so you're talking about, I think you're referring to the uh, Old Town Predator that already has them in Coda Motor. I, I don't know if it has, it's not really apples to apples as far as the output. That may require a little more um, output, if I'm not mistaken. Now, a good comparison would be, I don't even know if that would be a comparison because that's a full on trolling motor versus like the Bixby jet is a, um, it's like a micro jet compared to what, uh, that Minn Kota is. The Minn Kota is pretty bulky and I know exactly which one you have. Uh, so I don't think it will be compatible, but I could be wrong. I mean, I don't know if anybody's actually tested that. I'd be interested to see if you go, uh, on Bixby's website and then Minn Kota's website and kind of look at the voltages and all that and, and see what the outputs are i'd be curious to see what what it is if it matches maybe maybe <clears throat> for two years only took it out <laughs> yeah two, yeah why is that joe why i mean you just haven't found time to to get on the water is that what's going on uh india nola vid marcus uh says yeah, i don't know what that means Jimmy is in a meeting right now because he's an essential worker. Yes, deep cycle battery. Yeah, exactly, Job. I don't know. Joe or Job? What do I call you? Joe or Job. Uh, my question to you guys is, how do you, do you as, as kayak anglers, so I've got about 15 or so of you guys on right now. 
Here's what I want to ask you guys. Do you use, do you use, do you all use batteries? Do you rely on, on batteries or do you just keep it simple? You know, which obviously there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I still do keep it simple. Um, just depends on how I feel, you know. Sometimes I feel like going out and hitting 85 miles an hour and going where we don't need roads. Roads. Oh, that was a bad Back to the Future reference quote there. Um, <laughs> so, um, do you rely on batteries? You know, I mean, it, it's it's funny, like, it's easy for me to get caught up in all the newest and latest greatest stuff but uh coming from you guys my q a to you guys is how important is a battery to you um how much are you willing to spend on a battery and what devices would you use you know now you guys are on the hot seat let's see here i'm new to kayak fishing and don't want to go by myself oh hey man yeah that's um, yeah, that's a good one, dude. You got to be careful, man. Um, you know, out down here in Corpus, we see it all the time and it's not just Corpus. It's across the nation, across the world. Um, people lose their lives doing this all the time. Uh, you got to pick your conditions, right? You know, be safe about where you're launching. Do all, do all the work you need to, uh, or research that you need to do on, or yeah, to do on your territory. Every territory is different, right? So Texas, we don't have tidal fluctuations like Florida, you know, they're not, you're not getting eight foot tidal fluctuations, which can create a massive amount of current, uh, here in Texas, we, we get a, like one, two foot at the most. Um, and that, it, that type of current is just something we can work through all the time for the most part, depending on where you're at and what kind of kayak you're at or on and, you know, your endurance and stuff like that. But paddling solo, it can be a little risky. Some of us uh, with a lot more experience obviously do it. Um, I do it, you know, not something I advertise all the time. But, you know, I do go solo. But I'm real comfortable with uh, the areas that I'm in. So I haven't learned the do's and don'ts. Yeah. Duracell for my area. Duracell, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if – well, okay. So if you're – if you're using a Duracell for, <laughs> for your aerator, you'll probably get about a year's about a year out of this, if not more. Um, I don't think you need to draw that much power out of uh, out of that. So, if you're just using an aerator, well then, obviously, uh, stick with your batteries, man. No need in spending a couple hundred bucks on a on a battery. But if you're starting off with an aerator, and then you start throwing in lights because you're doing nighttime light fishing tossing lures and, and lines at docks and um, you start noticing that you're starting to use a little bit more electronics. Now you're slapping on that side scan so that you're not burning time on certain docks or certain lights. You want to see it before it happens. Um, well, then your your need for power, your demand for power begins to go up and you can start upgrading and looking into other uh, other options. But as far as a battery goes, man, I got nothing... But good things to say about the Bixby 166, man. It's um, I'm not that kind of guy that's all that likes to put that game changer uh, slogan on things. Um, but it really is in the battery world. There's nothing like this in the battery world, and I've 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 looked at all of them. You know, there are a couple that do come close, but you're still for the price you're not getting what you're getting here, and um, that's a cool thing, man. It's a cool, and it's a good thing for the industry. It's going to push more, uh, more and more things to make kayak fishing fun. Who knows? Now I got an excuse to put on lights on my kayak. Uh, as a kayak, okay. So Fez assists says, as a as a kayak fish, do you think that all the tech is useful? Like, would you find the time to get all the tech, or would you just use rod and reel paddle? Um, I know that's the same question you just asked. No, I mean, that's a good question. Um, wait, let me see how you ask that. Yeah, so for what I do, it's it's very useful. Um, you know, I, what I try and do on, on Next Level, we, we have different playlists, right? So obviously tech isn't that cool. 
when I'm cooking. <laughs> but um, if I'm traveling, if I'm going to take you guys on not just kayak fishing, but if I'm also going to take a journey and do a survival trip for you guys where I don't have power and I don't have enough uh, days to have hold batteries, you know, and this is something that's coming. It's a little inside scoop, but I, I'm, I'm looking at how I'm going to approach survival trips for you guys, you know, and these will be like two or three uh, episodes into one, you know, one episode, but they'll be split. It's like a, a season, I guess, one season of three episodes survival. And, you know, something like this tied to what they do already offer a solar panel is not only going to give me the ability to power my kayak, but it's also going to give me the ability to take you guys further on those journeys, right? I mean, you can only hold so many GoPro batteries. Um, so for me, it's super important. And for, and that's just one little aspect, right? Now, if you're an, an outdoors enthusiast, like not just a kayak angler, but if you're an outdoor enthusiast that has a kayak and you take your family out, this is super beneficial um, to keep that amount, that much power in the palm of your hands. It, it is super important, I think. Laptop, you can power your laptop with this thing. Uh, there's a lot more things other than just what's within uh, the confines of your kayak uh, that this thing can be used for. And, and I plan on showing you guys all that as, as we go on this year. Um, as far as it powering, uh, fish finders and stuff like that. Yeah, man. I mean, the way I fish, I do, I like to show you guys, you know, I don't, it, it's, I, there are different, uh, influencers, right? The type of influencer that I am, I like to get my hands into, onto new things and try things and, and have fun with you guys. You know, like, um, I've explained how I use side scan to help me put much better quality on fish and I think there's people they have questions about that well how, how are you doing that well I don't want to just show you to, you know I want to explain it to you guys and, and show you guys how important uh tech is in, in fishing now I, I get it right I mean if if I wasn't a content creator uh would I be more simple about the industry would all this tech matter um it would matter. I, I think I would still get my hands on fish finders and, and stuff like that, but um, I, I probably wouldn't be surrounded by as much to answer your question. So as an influencer, yeah, it's pretty important, I think, because I like to I like to create discussion with you guys. I like for you guys to look at things and there's people that have questions about these things and, and I have the ability to grab a hold of things before they hit the market and I, I, I enjoy showing you guys before before it's there and, and this way you guys can draw an opinion on it and you decide for yourself if it's something that you'll like um <clears throat> let's see i hope i answered that question batteries at this point are not part of my arsenal yet <coughs> pardon me oscar yeah um how you doing oscar so yeah man you know i went so let's see i went about five years before I even thought about putting batteries in my kayak. I always thought like they just, why would I want a battery in my kayak? Right? <laughs> like it just doesn't sound like a good idea to put a battery around water, <laughs> you know, and, and rightfully so, man. Like I know guys that have put seriously, no joke, literally, literally or literal car batteries in their, in their, in their kayaks, like the big bulky ones. And I, I've, in the past, I was just like, why? Like, if you tumble, if you short that out, like, it just doesn't sound smart. And um, then I found myself having to figure out how to power fish finder. You know, that's how it began with me. And uh, then, you know, and even that was still kind of a bad idea. You know, it was, it was a money pit, dude. Uh, I'm Every time I'll get a little bit of salt water on it, or if I didn't grease it up with the de-electric grease, um clean the terminals appropriately. I was always getting battery errors, you know, always leaving them on the drip charger and just getting errors. And it's just, it just became a pain, dude. And I was spending a lot of money on that. I would, I think I, I would definitely spend more money in one year on deer feeder batteries, which usually run like between 20 and 50 bucks, depending on where you get them and the quality. Whereas this, you know, I'd rather just spend hundred and what is it? 200 ish dollars and just be done with it for the next 10 years. You know, that's the way I see it. Waterproof, 
it's taken care of. Um, so how do you, how did you get into kayak fishing? Man, Joe, uh, Joe. So I got into kayak fishing. I was inspired. I re I can remember. I mean, I've always, not, I wouldn't say I've always seen it. I've always fished, right? I've, where did I share this story on? I've shared this story to a few other podcasts. Uh, I think two, two different ones. Um, but where it hit with kayak fishing was just the simple fact that, you know, I was a land-based fisherman and I wanted to be able to get to that spool island, which was in eye view, right? Um, and it was as simple as, well, can't get there because there's a channel in front of me, right? So then uh, I was like, man, I, do I want a boat? You know, sh should I get a boat? I, I, want, I wanted to explore more waters. I was always big into, man, like, I can't get over there, and it looks beautiful. The sun's setting. I see all these spool islands. There's flats, but I can't wade that far. Like, I wanted, I had this exploring kind of um, mindset, and so I was tinkering one day on, on YouTube, and I ran into these kayak anglers on the East Coast. Uh, these are ocean kayak guys, man. I've told this story before. So if, so if, if you guys have heard this story before, I apologize for repeating it. Um, and we're going to whip it back to this photo right here, this story. So, and I'll make it quick. Um, long story short, man, uh, Kevin Whiteley, Rob Choi, man. Uh, those two dudes, man, I, at that point in time, you know, I'm catching slot reds and I'm, I'm a happy camper. Uh, I didn't know. I mean, I knew the redfish got big, but I didn't know. You could fight the size and caliber of fish they were fighting on small boats. And this is like, this is 10 years ago, if not more. And before GoPros really made the comeback, man, and I'm seeing Rob Choi out here, dude, and, and Kevin, <clears throat> they, they are buying these VHS uh, cameras and they're making, they're, they're wrapped in like plumber PVC pipe. And they're putting these plastic domes and waterproofing them and sticking them in their flush mount holders. Obviously, what I use, but in, in a GoPro sense, right? You see my boomsticks from Railblazer. Well, there. this is before any of that, man. And, uh, dude, they're slamming these 60-inch redfish. 50, I mean, when they were getting anything under 50, it was like, oh, okay. But they were, they were on the hunt, dude, for big, big fish getting towed around, fighting, letting the slack out, putting the rods back in the rod holder, redirecting with their paddle, going around pylons, resetting the hook, bringing that big old 55, 60-inch redfish and slapping it over the hole and almost sinking their kayaks. Like, I mean, these guys are loaded down with old-school milk crates, old-school rods. Uh, dude, when I saw this in, in laying in my bed, dude, I was just like, dude, who are these guys? How are they doing this? Where can I go? How do I, I want to catch big game like this, right? And so from there on out, man, it just took off. And I bought an $80 uh, Sony action camera, started filming with my buds, dude. And it just, man, yeah, I didn't expect it to get to where, where we are right now, but this, this is definitely where we're at. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, you know, back then it was real simple, kind of just filming and going. And, uh, I just, it, it was just wild, man. It, it was, it was crazy <clears throat> because, uh, you know, I didn't expect to be an ambassador. I didn't expect to work for companies in the kayak industry. Um, I didn't expect to be where I'm at right now, or I didn't expect to be writing for magazines and stuff like that. It just, that's how it started. And that's how I got into it. Sorry. That went a little longer. Uh, have you... Have they designed Bixby for Hobie rudders to uh, Oscar? Yes. So there's um, there's two solutions. Um, there's a sleeve that you can put a, a Bixby down into the I wouldn't say the problem, but the obstacle is that you still need a sense of you need a drive. Right. So um, I the the sleeve with the Bixby works great, <clears throat> but I think what works even better if you don't have a power pole is they have a power pole mount now. So you can get a power pole mount and mount it where your power pole would go in the back of your Hobie and it's got the swing bar and you mount your Bixby there. Um, now it depends on what 
style of hobie you have where you may want to use that you may not want to use that and it all kind of depends on your rudder control or control system so if you've got the fin underneath no problem i would recommend getting that power pull mount for your bixby if um you have the rudder that folds over i don't know how compatible that is because i don't have any experience with it so in that case you may want to get the sleeve so basically it's a sleeve that the drive goes straight down with the motor and uh, that's how you can utilize that so yes you have two options for hobie um and and also curious now your once you have the the big speed mount and it's it, when you have the power pole mount and it's in its anchor it's in the down position it sort of becomes your directional it sort of becomes your rudder essentially so you know your rudder i don't know how that would work i'm sure it does but I don't, at that point, I don't know how effective your rudder is. You know what I'm saying? So in other words, now you got two directional pushes. Unless you can, oh, that's right. You can lock that your Bixby in, in in place, so that you can still use your your normal rudder. That's what the difference is. Um, and then I think there's an option on that arm to make it part of your rudder system. Now, what I like about it more than anything, more than putting it on the old town, is putting it still on the like my trident man holy smokes dude that trident flies dude with the big speed you know and and it's a hundred percent hands-free whereas you know like if i'm on my predator pdl or you're on your hobie you're still you're not a hundred percent hands-free you're still kind of toggling the switches right or your your directions with the rudder but when you're on an old school traditional kayak with the rudder and you've got the motor or i'm sorry with or without the rudder and you got the motor particularly the universal rudder uh you know, that con that basically becomes your full rudder turning and uh you turn a lot much quicker with that motor blasting and you you've got everything on your toe controls or your your uh, foot pegs and it's nice to be able to change directions and have both hands free it's different it's a different feeling and it's an amazing feeling whenever you're in the shallow flats chasing redfish and you're able to just like cruise with them dude and just pitch it's Awesome, man. Um, uh, because the rudder flips up under the kayak back on top of the holy. Yeah, yeah. I th so, Oscar, if you have the rudder that flips from the back of the stern and it goes in, then you probably want to get the sleeve that goes into your Mirage Drive fitting. If you have the rudder that is underneath the kayak and isn't exposed or flopping up, then you probably want to look into uh, the... Universal, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, um, wow, brain fart, um, the power pole mount and use your, and still have your drive in and use it as an assist. One of the unique things about it, not to go too far off subject here as we're sort of Q and A in this, um, is that it's much better as an assist than a reliability propulsion system. I think personally, a lot of people use it and rely on it, but You'd be real surprised how little effort when you have that big speed just on number one to three speed, not even pushing it, and then you use it in combination with your, your rudder. Dude, you get some speed with very little effort, man. So that's to answer that. I forgot about those guys. Yeah, Mr. Uh, yeah, dude, um, <laughs> those guys are awesome. Oh, so to whip that old – we're going to bring this story back. So Rob Troy, man um, – those two guys have inspired me uh, to kayak fish uh, just by watching their videos, man, because I, I wanted in, dude. I wanted to know what it felt like to catch a big game on a kayak. Uh, and I it, it, the, the whole organized chaos of it, the, just the adrenaline, the, the close combat fishing experience, uh, it's a lot different from when you're on a boat, man, and you're reaching over and fish are out there. But when you're face-to-face, -face, and these fish are thrashing and bashing and – especially the toothy critters, man. It, it gets your blood pumping, dude. It, it's definitely kind of like bringing the sport back into fishing. Not that it's not a sport, but you know what I mean. But Rob is a huge artist, and um, he's big on the, this type of art where they, uh, you know, it's an original piece from him. Um, uh, gam, gam, not Gamakatsu. I always forget how to pronounce the, the name of this art. Um but I bought this from him, man, and 
he sent it. They're, they're East Coasters, Virginia. And um, I, I let him know. I was like, hey, dude, just, you know, man, I'm a huge fan of you, dude. Like, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for y'all's videos, you know, 10 years ago. And um, I, I just, I got to own a piece of your art, dude. I'm not even a big art collector, but this dude does some amazing stuff. And that's a, a yellowfin tuna tail. And those are original. So once you put it down and you make that, <clears throat> that's it. That is it, man. I mean, there's only one of those. Um, what's your take on inexpensive kayaks like Liberty Outdoor Kayaks and Hoodoo Kayaks? Little off subject, but no, nah, it's fine, man. We can we can change it up a little bit. I mean, we'll close it off with the battery and stuff. I don't mind answering other questions. Uh, as I said earlier, we can <clears throat> go off subject a little bit if you'd like. Um, more than my biggest thing about inexpensive kayaks is I got nothing wrong. There's, I got nothing bad. Well, uh, there are some bad things or some things to look out for when we talk in lines of inexpensive kayaks. Um, you know, as an influencer, as an ambassador, as a rider, as somebody who, you know, helps people get into this sport. <clears throat> um, I don't care what you're in as long as it's obviously within your budget, you know, find out if you like it first, but more than, more than anything, is that kayak at least built the right way? You know, the, the, is it built good enough to where it's going to not put you in harm's way? Um, we've got into the problem with whenever you get an explosive industry like kayak fishing is you get all these companies that want to just get their piece, right? And so it, it's a challenge. It's something that the kayak world is it has experienced and it still is experiencing it. And, and you get these cookie cutter kayaks. Um and there's, there's nothing wrong with cookie cutter kayaks. It's just quality control. You know, I don't care. I, I know, you know, some of us are, if it ain't made in America, it ain't no good. Right. Um, but more than, more than that. And there, you know, I, I'm all about made in America. Don't, don't get me wrong, but more than anything, when it comes down to kayaks, more than where it's made from, whether it's from South America, China, Korea, Taiwan is how good is our quality control? And I'll give you a perfect example. One of my first kayaks was a $300 uh, Heritage. <coughs> American-made kayak, by the way. And I, I had a horrible experience uh, early on with it because they didn't cut uh, the, the front hatch the right way. And they didn't put the, 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 the hatch cover tight enough. So it was taking on water. And I, I sunk that thing three or four fourth trip out man you know imagine if I was offshore and that happened uh, that would not be fun that would not be good so um, when you go you know just inspect your kayak give it a water test uh, even if it's a if, if it's if a pelican if you don't have the budget and I know if everybody gives pelican um, a little bit of heat because they're the the quick they're probably one of the easiest kayaks to get in and, and they're cost effective I mean they're not bad kayaks they're just um, designed a little differently but um they work and a lot of guys can they'll start off on a pelican kayak and once they feel like dude I, I love this then you can start upgrading to more premium versions of that so main thing is just to understand everything in and out of a kayak no it's weight capacity because if you push that then you're pushing your your stability on it and that water line once you hit underneath that water line you're done dude your stability's gone uh can you self-rescue is it a dry kayak give it the water test um price inexpensive um is it concerning it can be and it can't i've seen a much drier 500 hundred dollar kayak outperform a less drier 1200 hundred dollar kayak think about that one for a sec and that all comes down to design so whatever helps you get into the sport man uh by the way liberty kayaks are pretty decently built um they have a very similar hole design to the original Vibe Seaghost. Uh, Vibe Seaghost has gone through transitions. Obviously, their holes are, is a lot different now, but um, they're using that style of mold. If you go back to like the first gen Vibe kayaks, and those were pretty relatively dry kayaks, man. I, I had a Seaghost at one point. Actually, I got videos of me on that. So I hope that answered your question, man. So, ooh, what's the time here? I don't want to, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this up. Oh, more questions. What do you think about the Texas Power Paddle 
that fits into the Hobie kite with a transducer. I think that's a great idea. I've heard a little bit about it. Um, my good buddy and uh, team member from ACK, uh, Matt Murphy, I think he has one or has been using one or has been testing one. Or I think I may have just blown his cover here. <laughs> I think he's uh, messed with it. Um, it's I, I've heard good things. I haven't heard anything bad about it. I don't have any personal experience on it. I would be interested to see how it's powered. So if you look at the big three, right? Um, and I'll actually, well, the big, let's do the big four. Okay. That are actually making efforts into the motorized industry and making efforts into powering those motorized industries. Um, you have the Texas power paddle, right? I think is what I, I could, I might be getting that name wrong. So there's that one. You have Minn Kota who's been, they've been around since the beginning of time, dude, when it comes down to motors. There's actually an ocean kayak, the Torque, the Ocean Torque Kayak. That was one of the first kayaks 10 years ago that actually had a Minn Kota motor on it. That's a little trivia question for you. So this is 10 years. They, they, we weren't ready for it 10 years ago, but we're ready for it now. Uh, then you got Torquedo, and now you got Bixby. So those are like the four companies really pushing motorization um and electronic uh power right i would say bixby's probably the only one that's truly mm, integrating their own power into their system and th this isn't the only thing that that they have that powers uh the the uh power bank that also powers the bixby jet itself also has accessory ports on it where you can draw more juice so if you're just crazy in DIY you could have a battery up front battery in back powering your motor powering your electronics super light and if you love wire management and you're good at it you can get pretty nifty with stuff dude to where you're just like wow you know this is, this is pretty impressive wire management the way it connects it's all watertight yeah uh, you don't have to worry about anything getting wet um, it's cool man it's real cool um, God bless you, brother. God bless you. No problem, man. Um, so yeah, dude. So, um, that's all I could really say about that, Oscar. Um, I, I haven't been on one. I've seen videos of it. It seems like it works great. I would be, my only question looking at it from a outside perspective is how are they powering it? Um, that's what, that's what I'm always curious about. Any motor. How are we powering this? Am I having to carry a big old battery? Uh, big old deer feeder battery, a big old car battery, a lawnmower battery. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's the right now. Battery tech is what's going to control. I think personally, the momentum of how fast this technology is going to continue to improve. So we've got already our first generation of ele uh, motors out, especially between. Uh, Bixby, Torquedo, and that, the Texas uh, Power Company. Um, I always forget how, how, how to say that. Texas Power Paddle. Or pedal, maybe. So, Martin Sandoval. Can I use my lawnmower engine on my kayak? Man, dude, if... <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you could, dude. <laughs> oh, man, there's a picture floating around of an ocean kayak. I think it's like a prowler, and it's got a go-kart motor or something on it and somebody's pulling it on a trailer and that picture went viral like a month ago it's absolutely hilarious but yeah you could do it if you could think it you could do it if it's got a turbine in it or something's turning i guarantee you can turn a prop somehow some way so yeah um so anyway guys so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna wrap this up um so this is the bixby uh this is the power bank the bixby PP166, it's 166 amp hour. It's equivalent to 20 deer feeder batteries, waterproof up to 100 feet, and it can power everything without having to worry about always charging. I mean, I always charge everything at the end of every trip, but for peace of mind, this thing lasts a long time. So what you can look forward to on, on some of these future episodes is uh, I'll be taking trips where I'm actually relying on this to give you guys behind the scenes action. Um and these are lengthy trips. These are trips where I'm not, I can't take 20 GoPro batteries. So I have to have a source of recharging and I'll be using this. I'll also be using, uh, they have a, 
solar panel. Bixby has a solar panel that you can actually connect to this, so you're always uh, charging it. And it's quite amazing. You plug this into a wall, um, you know, it takes you about six hours to recharge it, five to six hours. The solar panel, as long as you have good sun, only takes seven. So you're not losing a lot of recharge power, which means that on your motor, on your electronics, when you're not using them, you're, you're continually popping in juice and you're extending the life of everything, man, which is which is great. That's the always that's the downfall to any anything electronic is how long is it going to last? Um, so that's something how you know, that's basically how you're going to see this unfold. Uh, also, you can look for uh, this to be on a Top Gear episode. I'm, I'm now working on that. Um, I have a few review videos that I need to send to Bixby, but I um, also want to give these guys uh, a real good feature on the top here because it's this is just amazing, dude. The technology, everything that's involved with it, how well they designed it, how much you can push it, how rugged it is. I think it's worth every penny, man. Uh, absolutely. So we will be getting into that pretty soon, man. Uh, how did you guys like the last three episodes, man? If we've if you guys are just tuning in and you haven't seen some of the episodes recently, we've got three episodes of back-to-back red fishing. I've got two minutes. And then um, then we finish it off with the catch and cook. You can probably hear my kids screaming right now. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, man. Uh, we're going to be changing the uh, script a little bit here. We're getting some offshore windows, although we are going in back into full shutdown because of COVID and all this stuff, so I don't, I'm not too sure how this is going to play out this weekend. We're all kind of chomping at the bit here, uh, seeing how it's going to... Uh, oh, look at you, Marty. Mar- is that my cousin, Marty? Oh, I think that's my cousin, Marty. Oh, this guy's tipping me. What a guy. I'm going to take you out for dinner, dude. Bring your mask, though. <laughs> um, guy had to come on up here. <laughs> I appreciate that, Martin. So, yeah, guys, I'll leave you all with that, man. <clears throat> um, give us a like. Give us a, a – if, you, if you're not subscribed, if you enjoy our content, man, um, subscribe. Hit the notification button. Uh, button That will let you guys know every time we release an episode here on Next Level Fishing TV. Um, it's been a blast, man. Uh, we just hit 10,000 on our YouTube uh, – 10,000 followers on our YouTube page. Uh, we hit 20,000 Facebook uh, this year also. Um, about to hit 10,000 on, uh, Instagram. Um, I don't know where we're at with Twitter and TikTok and all that stuff. I, we don't use that too, too much, but it's been, <clears throat> it's been crazy. It's been, it's been crazy. It's been fun, dude. Our numbers are, are record high this, the last six months alone. Um, and I've got only you guys to thank for that, man. So, uh, I'm, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the ride. Um, I'll continue to work hard showing you guys all the cool stuff that we continue to do or, or that we think we, we're we continuing to do. Um, showing you guys all the latest and greatest. We're in talks with some great new companies. Uh, we just got featured actually on the Angler app. If you guys have not heard of the Angler app, you will be hearing a little bit more about that here soon. Probably as soon as, about, I'll say about two weeks. Um, it's basically like a, a, I'll just throw them a little pitch real quick. Um, it's kind of like keeping a, a, a journal, right? If you're a serious fisherman and you, you want to keep, if you write pa- all your patterns down, your journal, so that the next year you can kind of pick up on, on things, <clears throat> the Angler app uh, basically puts it all into electronic form. Well, they um, feature Next Level Fishing TV. If you go on their app, we're right there on the front page, and we um, are actually, uh, I'm going to get down and dirty with this Angler app. And I think it's a good thing, man. Had a long meeting the other day with the guys who uh, designed this thing and um, trying to just kind of figure out how I could use it to where it's actually beneficial. And it's already proven, apparently, because they have already a huge following and a huge base that use it. It's a, it's private. It's free. Uh, it just keeps your personal thing. So I'll, I'll, that's something that you guys will see in some future episodes on how I use it. It's going to be super legit and big with trout fishing, man. Uh, because I forget about things, dude. I forget, man, this time last year, same conditions. How good did we do? What did we use? Was the pressure the same? Things like that, man. You know, I'm real, I, I think about, I think too much about fishing, to be honest with you, but that's where I'm at with it. Um, 
<laughs> slick Rick is in the house. It's all good, Slick. I'm going to uh, end it here, and then uh, you can go back and watch it. Uh, it's a fun one, dude. So uh, we talk about a few things on this one. Uh, so, yeah, so look forward to a lot of this. Hopefully I answered most of your questions. You'll see it again, like I said, on the uh, Top Gear episode. And uh, we're going to do some survival stuff there. Hope you guys have enjoyed the last few episodes. Y'all have a wonderful week, man. Have a safe week. Y'all stay healthy, man. Uh, just um, stay healthy, dude. It's crazy, man, what's going on. Uh, Corpus is not looking good, man. So it's affecting everybody. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed weekend, man. Thanks for all your support, continual support. And uh, when we hit, I- I'm working on something here for when we pass. It's going to be a 10K video. And it's going to be all for you guys, man. And I'm going to, we're going to figure something out um, very soon. Just keep an eye. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or here as well. And uh, we'll talk to y'all very, very soon. There's some exciting stuff coming soon. The next level fishing TV that are going to have to do, it's going to have to do with you. All you guys here watching, it's going to have to do with all you guys. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, super wonderful, wonderful. I'm just buying my time so I can change the screen here. Super, super wonderful.